The wait is over. A revolution in LED lighting for your pinball is finally here. Fully customizable, full spectrum lighting from Pin Stadium Lights. Order yours now at pinstadium.com. Okay, you ready? What's happening, guys? This is Zach and Greg. And before we start this most beautiful review that we're going to do in Star Wars, uh, let's raffle off these t shirts for the people who bought our t shirts, our SDTM yeah. t shirts. Right? Extra shirt with a shirt. Extra shirt with a shirt. There are still some available. Get yes. a hold of us. Um, we've got regular logo t shirts as well as our monster squid octopus mm -hmm. t shirt. Uh, but for those of you who ordered early, we're getting ready to ship those, right? Yep, yep, yep. So we are going to, let's first draw who's going to be the winner of the Jersey Jack t-shirt. Greg, right, go ahead. Dun, 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 who do we dun, got? Dun, 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 dun. We got Brandon Furman. Brandon Furman, come on down. You are the winner of a Jersey You're Jack t-shirt. You're the winner of a Jersey Jack t-shirt. So thank you, sir. Extra large. Thank Hopefully you. it fits. Yes, thank <laughs> you for the pre-order. Now we've got a couple American pinball t-shirts. Who's going to win those, Greg? And... These will be shipped with your uh, regular t-shirt. We have Jeff Patterson. Jeff Patterson, come on down. Pin 2D and check out This Week in Pinball. Very much so. Hey, yeah, that's a good thing. Lucky, yeah, lucky bastard. A free plug there, too. <laughs> and okay. the other American pinball t-shirt goes too. Charles Voigt. Charles Voigt. Thanks, man, for ordering a, a SDTM yeah. t-shirt. And for uh, those that didn't win, thank you for the pre-orders, yeah, man. Was, you guys were really very, awesome. very awesome. They're at the pre you hit it off with the bumper nice straight down the middle. Hey, what's happening, guys? This is Zach, and this is Greg from Straight Down the Middle of Pinball Show. And you guys see somebody on the screen right now, though, don't you? Yeah, that's our buddy, Chris, uh, also known as Canada. What's happening, Chris? Hey, guys, how's it going? Happy Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so we're first off, we want to thank uh, Canada for coming on because it's taken time out of his day, and uh, it, we've asked a lot from him to coordinate all of this so it's early morning lots of coffee right, right. you know Canada's already been to the damn gym man <laughs> i'm trying to get the pinball community in shape one day at a time so that's right i've had i've had pepsi and you're you're drinking coffee and he's out here pumping iron man. <laughs> uh so th this week we're going to review star wars uh by stern yes you guys pumped up for that yeah <laughs> I've, got some, I've got some thoughts on the game. I, I can't. That's, right. That's right. So uh, for those of you, uh, most of you guys know who Kaneda is. Um, he's a, I would call you a pinball uh, celebrity, if you will. Um, Maybe and, like a, a polarizing sort of politician in the world of pinball. I'll, Something like that. Yeah. I'll take that too. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Kaneda, we want you to check out his podcast, uh, it's like my favorite podcast. Mm -hmm. There's upcoming news. He gives uh, interviews. There's just a lot of stuff that Canada does on his podcast. It's probably, if not the one, one of the most popular podcasts, and for a good reason. He well, most informative. Most informative. That's where I get a lot, if not most, of my news. Um, and he just gives really good takes on the industry without without fears of pissing off anybody. Uh, he doesn't care. He wants to give a a good view of the industry, and he kind of works for the hobbyists and the collectors out there. So for that, Chris, we do appreciate that. I, I thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm humbled by it, uh, and it's, it's enjoyable. I love giving weekly updates on what's going on, especially to the new inbox collectors out there because they're all kind of crazy, right? I mean, we're buying $9,000 toys, so um, it's, it's fun to do. I, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but the one behind you doesn't look like a $9,000 toy, buddy. It plays like a $2,000 toy. It, <laughs> it, it costs 10 times as much. It's still broken. I'm trying to get it fixed. One, one day soon. But it's going to get fixed the day after I die. That's my feeling. <laughs> so. That's right. All right. So first off, we, what we wanted to do is we wanted to talk to Kaneda about his experience with Star Wars coming out, unveiling. Because I know, Chris, it's really a, a theme, for, like many, it's a huge theme for everybody. But... Tell us a little bit about the Star Wars theme in general, or your perception of it, or your interpretation of it. Well, I mean, it's Star Wars, right? Star Wars is more popular than most organized religions. I think something like 2 billion people are Star Wars fans on the planet. 
Um, it's the it's the biggest theme ever. You know, I hear people debating: Is Lord of the Rings bigger than Star Wars? Star Wars is by far the biggest theme that's ever been attempted with pinball. And for some reason, the biggest theme ever. And I love Star Wars. I'm the biggest Star Wars fan. Um, we just can't get a great Star Wars pin. It, it's it's like the 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 quagmire of pinball. Yeah. I just don't understand why. <laughs> With, with that subject matter, I just it's such a good theme, right? And we all grew up with the movies. I don't think there's any trilogy out there where um, we're so emotionally attached to it. And, and the iconic scenes from that movie, people can recall the lines 30, oh, yeah. 40 years later. So I was super excited when I heard Star Wars was coming out. I think everybody was. So I'm excited to talk about our thoughts on it and, 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 and our expectations for that pin. Well, yeah. you would think it would be easier because of that, because like you said, there's so many scenes that are iconic. You you would think that that source material and everything to pull from would be so much easier, and, and that it wouldn't be hard to to make a good pin. But everybody struggles with it. Well, I guess the challenge is if there's three movies, let's say roughly six, seven hours of scenes. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge is like what what do you put in and what do you leave out, right? And I think. When we look at the game today, it's like, well, they just left everything out. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more about that. But I, I, I definitely think there's so many scenes there that could be incorporated really nicely in, in a pinball machine. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's got to easily be the number one pinball theme ever or ever will be, I yeah. think. It's just theme in general. I mean, what other franchise would Disney buy for $4 billion? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you know, My Little Pony for that. Well, and I think that's the, the the difference between Star. I think Star Wars is more lasting than Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings has a big following and it's a great franchise, yeah. but I, I think Star Wars is, is it has more staying power. It's stood the test of time. Yeah, already. Yeah, and I think it's going to continue to. Oh yeah, and and look at right now, right? They the expanded universe of Star Wars. We can get prequels. We can get new films. Lord of the Rings is over. I mean, it's, yeah. it's done. There's nothing left to tell in that story. And then when they tried to do the prequel, they tried to, like, extend it, and look how bad it turned out. So, you know, Star Wars, we're at a whole new era of Star Wars hype, right? Young kids love it. Adults love it. I've never seen a property transcend so many generations. So that's why it was so, so important for the pinball to be great. <laughs> yeah. So we're tired, of, we're tired of people half-assing this theme. This theme <laughs> deserves... This thing deserves everything, yeah. uh, and we just continually come keep coming up short on it. So, Kaneda, what were your first impressions? So when the release came out, uh, you probably know about it a little bit beforehand, but when you first saw those pictures or, or got that inside info on the layout, Richie doing it, uh, the code being done by Sullivan, what were your first impressions on how it was released, number one, uh, the marketing behind it, because I know you're a marketing guy, and just the overall look of the art and the layout. What was your thoughts? Well, and, and I know I've shared these opinions a, a lot, but I never get tired of sharing them. So I think first and <laughs> foremost, I think everybody was kind of just tired of waiting to see it, right? I mean, from a marketing standpoint, they really missed the two big dates to hit, um, to be part of sort of the, the country's Star Wars celebration. So there's the Star Wars festival that takes place every year that they missed it. And we know Stern had a booth, so they were planning to show it there. Um, and that was in March sometime. And then May 4th, right? May the 4th be with you. I think we all were waiting for some Star Wars uh, to be shown then, and we got nothing. And then the 40th anniversary of the film was in the end of May, and they missed that as well. So I think by the time we saw it, there's, there's a little bit of like, fatigue in terms of like our expectations were being pulled all over the place. Um, when we finally saw it though, you get one chance to make a first impression of your product. And remember we got it in this like, it was like a video that came from Disney about... Like in a video, yeah. Yeah, it was like this weird like talk show sort of thing for eight minutes where they just showed some clips of the game. And so the first images we got were blurry screen grabs from YouTube video, which, which doesn't make any sense to me because if you're stern, why don't you just release the high-res images at the same time as that video, right? So we all had to like squint our eyes and look at it for the first time. Um, I would, look, like everybody else, I was underwhelmed by the art. I, I, we knew there were going to be restrictions and Disney was going to be tough to work with, but... And the, this is a big, like, but. 
why is it that where, wherever I see Star Wars art, whether it's comic books or Zen pinball, it's amazing. And yeah. then the, the stern version of the art layout just really looks sort of mediocre at, at best. Yes. So that brings up a good that brings up a good point. Do you think they were really stymied or handicapped by Disney itself? Because we see so much Star Wars crap that is interpreted in so many different ways, whether it be um, lunchboxes or kids or how Family Guy did a spoof on them. They had to allow that. So do you think they were really handicapped or do you think they were just trying to be efficient and true to the brand? Do you think it's a Stern thing, a Disney thing? I know it's both. But do you think they were as handicapped as much as they're saying or uh, alluding to? All we can do is speculate, right? Because I, I don't know. I, I don't know what Disney said to them. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know what the contract was. But all I can say is I've seen other people do it much better. And if I were to make a guess, I would guess that Stern didn't want to spend the money to go get one of these amazing artists and let because if you go to Disney and say, look, this guy did your comic books. He's amazing. Can he draw our play field for us from the ground up? Because pinball deserves to be drawn from the ground up versus slapping yeah. pre-drawn stuff onto the play field. Because if you look at the art on the machine, it's, it's existing. They just drew over photography. They, they took photographs and they hand drew over them. They, it's basically like sketching over a photograph. That's not an original concepted piece of Disney or Star Wars hand-drawn artwork. So I think part of it was probably cost-cutting. I think the disappointing thing for everybody was we were told this game was two years in the making, which yeah. is a long time to develop a game. And it looks like the art was sort of slapped together in just a few weeks. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And as much as uh, – we'll talk about code here in a minute. But as much as he put in that code – I. <laughs> I don't doubt that damn thing. He was probably painstakingly working over, I think, uh, to a deficit, unfortunately. But, yeah, I don't see where the where all that development time went. So what were your first impressions of the gameplay? You, you hop up to this machine, you put a handful of games on it, and we're not rating quite yet, but what were your first thoughts when you start playing it? I've played it a bunch of times uh, at Jack Bar in, in Brooklyn, New York. And it's a, it's a Richie pin. I mean, it, it flows nicely. It's fast. The game is really fast. And I was actually playing Dialed In and Star Wars Pro back to back. And it literally made Dialed In feel like it was in slow motion next to Star yeah. Wars Pro. Um, so if you enjoy speed, if you enjoy flow, uh, you know, I think the game has like a lot of that going for it. Obviously, by the time I got up to the machine, I'd already been disappointed by the art, disappointed by the toys. So it's like, oh, there's the TIE fighter on the spring that I think looks really cheap. Now it's in front of me. It, I wasn't, I didn't sort of get blown away by any of the elements in the game itself. Um, and I think the hardest thing when you step up to the game for the first time is understanding the rule set of the game. I, I just really get confused by stacking modes. And you literally like can't understand what to do in the game by reading the apron card, you need someone there to explain it to you. And luckily for me, Crazy Levy was there when I played it for the first time and he was giving me a tutorial. But Crazy Levy can't be everywhere in America when people play this game. That's, a, that's right. And I think that uh, just putting an apron card on there is a joke in itself. They should just put, yeah, we can't fit all this shit onto an apron card. What, what's, 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 what's frustrating is we, we all know the Star Wars story, right? So if I walk up to a Star Wars machine, and I know there's a lot of debate about how to tell a narrative through pinball, whether, you know, when Dwight did Ghostbusters and it was like sequentially how the movie unfolds. But if I walk up to Star Wars, I know the story. So when I begin the journey, I should kind of know where that journey begins because I'm familiar with it in the movies. But in this game, it's like, oh, well, the first thing I'm doing in Star Wars is combining Ewoks with like... Finding R two D two is like two things that don't go together, and I'm like this doesn't even make any sense. So, and then it's laid on top of each other, and then you've got sounds and music clips from everywhere. So yeah, it becomes a little convoluted. <laughs> and you look at the screen; it's like, all right, am I in an X wing or am I light in a lightsaber battle? It it's really confusing. I, I just don't think they understood or understand how to put yourself in a character, mm -hmm. and it's like. When I, when I played Lord of the Rings, the reason I love the theme integration, 
I feel like I'm in those scenes in the movies and I can yeah. understand the, the sequencing of events. Where I play Star Wars, it's just a lot of things happening at once that just don't make sense to me. I completely agree. So what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to go to a gameplay, not really gameplay video, we're going to go to like a, an overview of the machine itself. Uh, Wasp and Air is going to help us out with that, show the shots layout, basic rule set. But again, if we did a rule set on this game, Greg, it, we'd be here forever. Uh, and I don't want to do that no. because, quite frankly, I'm not a big – I like rules, but I don't like crazy-ass multiplier rules. So All this thing. I wouldn't even – it would be painstaking for me to have to go through and record that. So let's go to the gameplay video. Uh, let's learn a little bit and see a little bit more about Star Wars, and then we'll come back. Uh, Kaneda, Greg, and I will review this. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Zach from Straight Down the Middle of Pinball Show. I forgot my microphone, so if this is a little low, I apologize. We're here at Waspinators. He's going to show us how in the hell to play this beautiful Star Wars machine. All right, man. So, what do we need to know first off about Star Wars? Whenever we start it, we have four options, right? Yes. Okay, what do we got? So, there are four options when you start the game. You're going to have to pick a character. You've got okay. Luke, you've got R2-D2, you've got Leia, and you've got Han. Okay. Now, in my opinion, the difficulty of the game starts at Han goes towards Luke as far as easiest to more difficult. Good to know. Uh, I prefer Han. Okay, so we've up. got, do we have Han lit? Yeah, we got yes. Han lit. Then what do we do? So from here you're going to choose your skill shot. So that's kind of randomly picked at the start of the, each ball. So each character has, I think, like 25 or something. It may not be that much or maybe more skill shots that will randomly be picked from, as far as I know it's random anyway, uh -huh. to choose your path. Cool. So a lot of the times I'll pick start the tattooing mode because it's a lot easier to start that way as opposed to shooting for that because uh -huh. it's a difficult shot. But 99% of the time, I'll just go straight for Line Escape from Boba Fett, not for any other reason other than I really like the mode. It's fun. Very cool, very cool. So when you plunge the ball, where's it going to end up? It's going to end up with these stand-ups right here? It can. So I'll, this is if you hit these stand-ups here, you're going to get this one of these roving multipliers if you hit it correctly. Now, if you don't hit whatever is roving, you're not going to get that Sweet. multiplier. Sweet, okay. Uh, but if you short plunge, it can come over here to the force targets. That's the Hobbit. That's too. just like the Hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get that. So what do you what do you way. get if you are skill shot these over here? Now, as far as I'm aware, you just get a spotted letter. Okay. As far as I'm aware. But the spotted letters you need because in order to spot a letter, you have to hit that whole bank down once, right? And that'll light F. Yes. And then you hit them all down again, that'll light O. Yes. And then each letter has its own award. Every letter, yeah. Now, one cool thing, though, like when we go back to talking about characters, Luke is strong with the force, quote unquote. Yeah. He starts with a letter already spotted. Okay. So that's five. So that helps. Yeah. Quite and nice. then once you knock down, I think, is it E? You get a multi ball or something like that? Probably. E is. A, it's supposed to start lightsaber duel, which is also known as Jedi duel in the instant okay. info. Uh, so that's going to be like a, one of your qualifiers for Jedi multiball. Okay. So we've picked our character. We start playing this game. This thing's a hundred miles an hour. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so it's hard to keep up with what is going on. But what we do know is that the object of the game is to complete three, 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 or four. Right? There's yes. four in each. Four, eight, twelve. 16? There's 16 main modes okay. and like six or seven little mini modes. And we know that you can uh, you can stack these modes. Yes. You can stack a couple multi balls. Mm -hmm. And the object is to try to defeat one, two, and three. Then the main we'll call it what mini mini wizard mode. Yeah, I mean I call them hot dog modes, but mini wizard hot dog too, modes. So. I love that. You heard it here. Waspinator calls them hot dog modes. Okay, so. Then we escape from Hoth, we destroy the Death Star, we escape from Tatooine, and then we uh, battle above Endor, and that should technically bring us to... Well, no, that's still not a wizard no, mode, is no. it? No, so once you finish all these, what's going to happen is nothing. Nothing. Nothing's going to happen. Okay. Right? Okay, so the main wizard, at least not yet. Now, once you complete all of these modes, it's going to give you victory laps, okay. so we all know what that is. And if not, it's basically, hey, you completed a mode. Shoot a multi ball for points, or yeah. shoot a baller for points. So you're going to get those each time you complete one of these. Now, if you fail to complete the mode, it's still going to spot. Okay. But you're not going to get the victory multi ball. So with victory multi ball, the way the wizard mode in this game works is, you know how I told you you have to complete all these. Yeah. Right? So not only do you have to complete them, you have to complete the victory multi ball also. Oh damn. Once you complete the victory multi ball, you'll get a medal. Kind of like an achievement. Yeah. You have to have four medals. Okay. <laughs> so 
Basically, you have to blow this machine away to get to the wizard mode. It's Damn, okay. Very similar to Valinor multiball. All right. Now, if we're looking at shots here, we've got yeah. drop targets to the left, the force drop targets, right? Uh -huh. We've got our left orbit with the spinner. Mm -hmm. uh, anything in particular that the certain shots are, like is the left orbit, right orbit, anything in particular, or is it just shots per mode or shots per hurry up? Right now, that's about it. Okay. Like, there's very little reason other than the modes themselves to shoot the spinner okay. or, or the right orbit. They like they can go into the pop bumpers, but it's I got at this point an afterthought. So we got left orbit, we've got the Death Star shot, mm -hmm. which acts almost like Magneto and X-Men, how it's got that fork that comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fork comes up if you're taking the right portion of the orbit. Okay, so yeah, there's actually another thing back here as well. Oh, okay. So I actually just lit Hoth. I, I think that's, We're that's pissing not an optimal, it off. is it? We're pissing it off. Anyways, yeah. So if you come around this way, it's going to lock the ball in behind it. It's going to lock the ball in behind it. Oh, if you come in the other way too. My okay. Bad. Can we turn this off? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so. You just drain it. And just drain that guy. In. So, whether it's the Death Star shot or the Hoth shot, it's going to lock the ball in the same place. Okay. Right, right, right behind it. It's gonna chop your damn finger off. Basically, really. yes. So it's gonna, it's gonna lock. Don't do that at home, kids. That's right. Way. So, and then you know you can either start a Death Star shot or okay. off, whichever one. So if that if that is Death Star is blinking, that means your mode's ready. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. And then to the right. So this is an inner horseshoe orbit. Yes. A very fast one at that. To, to put it mildly, yeah. 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 And then you've got to the right of that left horseshoe orbit. You have your ramp shot mm -hmm. that goes up and around. You've got your uh, Steve Ritchie special. That's right. So that is green, <laughs> indicating the indoor. Yes. The indoor shot, uh, and then you've got the right portion of the orbit there, Hoth, mm -hmm. as well as the video mode, which I don't think is coded quite it's yet. It's not. Right? So video mode is going to be when you when you spot R, but it's not. In uh, I see. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Then you've got this three stand up bank here, and that's responsible. Let's see if I did my homework right here. Uh, it is responsible for multipliers. Mm -hmm. And it can t keep them, keeping them going as well as TIE Fighters. Yes. Okay, very good. And then I did miss this TIE Fighter right here. So that stand-up target, Little yeah, duty. it hits and it's got a coil behind it and bobbles it around, right? Yep. Very cool. And you hit that whenever you go into, and then you'll go into TIE Fighter. Hurry TIE Fighter up? Multi, well, or yeah, main. TIE Fighter Hurry Up will come first. Okay. I think the first one starts at maybe five. I got So you. then you have to hit it. Once you hit it, you go, you go into uh, TIE Fighter Assault, Okay. and that's going to be your you slam the button. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can. Now, there was actually a, uh, a grace period when the clock got to zero, and you could still get TIE Fighters. Yeah. So if you're on point eighty three code, you can still do that, but with the newest update, as soon as it hits zero, if you keep slamming the button, all you're really going to be doing is moving your multipliers around. You're okay. Not multipliers. All right, going to the right of that, we've got the right ramp. Like you said, that Steve Ritchie special goes mm -hmm. up and comes back down. Looks just like Star Trek, actually. And then you've got uh, stand-up targets. Waspinator said that they uh, mimic Lannister Basically, in Game yeah. of Thrones. A lot of that. Then you've got your right orbit. Uh, from the gameplay videos I've seen, the orbits look pretty smooth. They are very smooth, yeah. The, the, every shot is smooth. I mean, I know this looks like super ridiculous, but, and it is super ridiculous and super ridiculous. Yeah. Super ridiculously fast, but it's so smooth and satisfying. All right, right, so going to the right here, we have a right scoop that's responsible for mystery as well as your tattooing shots. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it. This is my favorite shot of the game because this is what I'm so good at. It's draining. So the, the right drain here. Um, but what is good to know, that there is an escape. So on Star Trek, it's to the left. It's like this um, kickback simulation, right? So to yeah. the right, if you have escape lit, then if it drains down there, it's gonna kick your ball back. And it just gives you new, another gets you ball. Gets you a new ball. Yeah. There's no kickback, sadly. It just gives you another ball. I want kickbacks. Me too. Games. Me too. Damn. I want some kickbacks. So that's about it. Thanks again, Waspinier, for running us through this game. No problem. And we, Greg and I are gonna review this bad boy now. Thank everybody, or thank Waspinier. Hey, Please. thank you. All right, guys, so now you got to see what Star Wars is all about. Hopefully, at this point in time, you guys have been able to see the machine, at least in person, or a yeah. lot of high-res photos. Um, we'll show those on the screen here as well. But get your hands on the Star Wars because our reviews are only one thing. We want you guys to play it and tell us more than likely, be, you know, you're going to tell yeah. us we're right. But Exactly. Yeah, hell, who knows? <laughs> maybe you ha maybe you love the game you think we're complete idiots. Uh, that happens quite frequently yeah. as well. So 
Kanae, let's start with art, man. Um, we'll kick it off to you. What do you think about the art package? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I just think it's mediocre. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I'm, I'm probably in this sort of minority group where I consider pinball artwork to be super important. Uh, be, I, I think pinball machines are works of art, and I think games should be as exciting to look at when they're off as they are to play when they're on. Um, and again, because it's Star Wars, I think all of our reviews have to go through that filter, but it's Star Wars, so which demands things be the best possible thing. Um, I think the art's mediocre. I think um, when I look at it, I just, to me, the one thing, this is like the, the, the new Stern that just, I can't get over it. Look at the pop mumpers on Simpsons Pinball Party. They're, they're the nuclear reactors, right? There's like this sense of like, art is not just on the play field, but art is also the sculpting of the toys and the mechanisms. And on Star Wars, they're just dropping like Lando's face on a pop bumper that's flat with no depth, nothing. Um, and I just feel like when I look at it, I don't get a sense of all the different universes and planets and scenes from the movie coming to life on the artwork itself. Um, it's just a bunch of characters with the Millennium Falcon. It's, I don't know. And there's so much blue. Like I just don't see blue as the color yeah. of the Star Wars universe. That's, That's a, a good, good point. point. I mean, pop bumpers alone, look what Jersey Jack did with the Hobbit with the barrels. Oh, yeah. I mean, just that kind of stuff. Or even Ghostbusters, like we've uh, talked about before. Yeah. Just putting a damn plastic over those to yeah. create right. that world inside of the box right, yeah. there. Um, and that's just the pop bumpers alone. For me, um, what screams to me, the play field, I, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, in person, in person I think it's a, it's a lot better than it is. Photos. I'm okay with it. My biggest pet peeve, because the trans lights are fine. I like the trans lights. For an LE, if I'm spending nine thousand dollars, give me a damn back glass. Like, yeah. right, stop doing that shit. That's ridiculous. Right. But the cabinet art, like everybody hails this premium, right? But if you look at it, I hate how I want the cabinet to tell a story as well. Yeah. I don't want one half to be part of a movie and then the other have to be a stark different color yeah, I don't like the that color either. combination so you've got Hoth in one scene with all the snow and everything and then they then you're in mid outer space on the other side of the cabinet yeah. that's why I really like the LE cabinet art because at least it's the Millennium Falcon right. in action on both sides yeah. um, when it comes to art package translates I'm good with I'm at where am I at I'm at a B so I was higher than I thought I would be on this grade yeah. uh, just because I love the bag glasses. I'm good with the LA bag glass actually because I think you can do a lot uh, behind the bag glass itself. If it was a true mirrored bag glass, which they should do, again, you guys, this is freaking Star Wars. Right. This is Star Wars. So you bag like you like the the LA bag glass with the characters' backs to you and they're going into sort of See, light I, speed. I hate it. I hate it. I'm blown like away it. that he likes it. I like I, it I, because I, it tells a story. At least it tells me a story. I don't have to have all this. Photoshop characters everywhere. It's like, oh, I want the dark characters. Oh. I don't care. I want to tell a story. And to me, that hyperspeed, and you've got the main characters right there. Oh, I think it's so plain. That's what I was talking. No, I feel like the characters, like, it's like they saw the Playfield artwork and they're jumping into Lightspeed to get away from the pinball machine as fast <laughs> as possible. Um, what, yeah, I mean, look, I, I actually think the premium and the pro like, back glasses are better. And, and I, I think, I think I the LE package, I do like the Millennium Falcon, but that's the thing with this machine is I feel like each version of it has a compromise. And the LE, though, should be unanimously like that's the creme de la creme. Like I think people would say – to me, Ghostbusters LE was like the greatest LE it, in terms of like it looked the part. I got – why I would spend more on this. I don't think Star Wars has that same sort of confidence that this is the creme de la creme version. I agree. I, I completely agree. Greg and I always say that Star Trek LE was the nicest indie, greatest stern LE, and then after that, nothing compares. So uh, you have a thing like Star Trek, which is great. It's huge. It's no Star Wars. So why wouldn't you, at minimum, do with the treatment that you did with, with yeah. stern Star Trek? Um, that, I don't know. The play field itself... The choices, I don't think they're great. Yeah. That's why I'm at a B. Where are you at? I'm at a C on it. I just okay. think it's average. It's it's an okay thing. Where are you at, Canadian? I'm at, I'm at, I'm at a C as well. Okay. Uh, I, I think this game will go down as like a little bit better than Game of Thrones, a little bit better than 
You know, like we could talk about Richie and artwork too, because like all of his themes, man, the art is always like the afterthought. And it's something that you'll hear over and over again. It's he'll give you the flow, but he won't give you the visual pop that people want with these themes. Yeah. So that's a good point. Do you think that's a Richie thing or do you think it's because he's given the themes that are huge that have the most restrictions? I, yes. Cause we don't see it from the other designers as much. I think I, he's the designer. You know, we hear this a lot on the forums lately. It's like, who do you blame if a that's game right. comes out? And it's not like one person to blame, but at the end of the day, the designer needs to take responsibility because it's his game. And I'll I'll go out on a limb and say the greatest designer that's also the best creative director of all time is John Papadook. Like he would never let that game come out looking like that. And I think, you know, I just don't think that's Steve's thing. I just don't think he looks at Game of Thrones and says, we can't release this. We've got to go back. If it means delaying the game, whatever, we can't release a bunch of cogs as the world of Game of Thrones. Yeah. But but he was okay with it on some level. But do you think he just gets stuck in gameplay and flow so much that he just misses everything else? Yeah, it, it almost looks like, and, I've, and people are saying this, and I, I believe it, I feel like he designs the Whitewood before even knowing what the theme is in a way. And you it can also, just put yeah. the theme over it. ACDC is the one where I really feel like he it, it's, it's ACDC got the bell it's got the cannon it's got like i feel like they really thought that through very nicely i if you put acdc next to star wars and you say all right which one did you intimately bring the world of that theme to life you know it's it's like we're going backwards with yeah, the bigger yeah. theme that's very true very so, very true canada's at a c i'm gonna be I'm uh, gonna greg's at a c um let's talk about shots and layout so for shots and layout i'll, I'll kick this one off um it is very basic Richie. I can take yeah. five Richie design games and I guarantee you I could put a Frankenstein together that is Star Wars. Um, now, Shots and Layout, does it shoot good? It does shoot, it does good, shoot really good to me. Um, it's really fast. But is there any shot that is absolutely satisfying? For me, it's the horseshoe yeah. orbit. I like that. Otherwise, I've got these same Richie ramps. And yeah. ramps are huge to me. I like a good, nice, John Papa Duke swirly ass ramp that's doing something special. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was at a B. And and, and I I was at a B plus, but I, I just like Richie. I, I like that flow. I like Star Trek or Star Wars a lot or Star Trek a lot. Yeah. I like Spider Man. Like I, I like I like a lot of that flow, but at the same time, I, I think it falls to the whole problem that both of those games fall to is th- those shots. While they're satisfying in the beginning, it, it gets very old, very repetitive, and it gets yeah. very boring very quick. Because mm-hmm, you can just keep going. You can just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flow is nice and it's amazing at first and it feels good at first, but then it, I feel that it, it, it kind of loses its luster. And to add before we throw it over to Canada, one of the things I freaking hate about Steve Ritchie, and it's not because it's hard, everybody's going to be like, oh, it's because it's hard. That stand up drop, or it's not even a drop, the stand up targets right in the middle of the play field, there is freaking nothing satisfying about no. that. There's just not. If you make them into drops or make them into drops that have at least God forbid targets behind them, or maybe a pass through hole that goes into something. But the biggest part of your multipliers is three stand up targets that do nothing. There's nothing satisfying about that shot. Yeah. What do you think, right. Canada? Yeah, I, I think it flows really nice. I think it's fast. Um, I would just say, with a caveat, we're talking about the pro, right? So we don't know yet, yeah. and we'll see tonight. They're going to show the LE finally. What the hyperdrive, what the shot into the Death Star is. Because I, I do think the Pro looks really stripped down. Um, mm-hmm. And the two main, probably fun elements, which are hyperdrive and the shot into the Death Star, aren't available for us to review. But I don't think those are going to add that much. Yeah, I, no. I, think, I don't know what they could add. No, because they're not interactive. I agree that the, the, the targets right below the LCD screen mm-hmm. are, are really boring to shoot. Um, I, I would love to see a lot more uh, happen in terms of what the ball interacts with. And I think the main thing I keep harping on is Star Wars is a story about using the force. And how do you not have magnets force grab yeah. the ball? For me, like with that missing, I just don't feel like stuff is happening in the game physically that feels like I'm going through the Star Wars universe. I feel like I'm going through a pinball universe and pinball flow is happening. 
And so much of it is about rolling the ball over lights and switches, yeah. but not it's not dropping me into the world of like Endor, Tatooine, or Dagobah. Yeah. And that, that's what I want to feel more on the play field. And I think they relegated so much of that to just the LCD screen, which my belief is Stern doesn't really know how to incorporate LCD yet with properties yeah. like this. They're still learning. Yeah, well, and that's that's like I, I think that that's where like e- even though Star uh, Star Trek was so stripped down and everything, and the play field is actually kind of bland when you look at it. it I still felt that it kind of if if you watch those Star Trek films, it still kind of encompassed in a way the feeling of Star yeah. Trek in a sense, especially with the warp ramp and, and, yeah. and the call outs and the sounds sort of matched, and it was just that clean. Uh, play field that kind of fit a clean spaceship like they had their uniforms the colors everything and so it still kind of is bears what that play field was it was still integrated a lot yeah. better than what At this least you had a third flipper so you're adding some shots yeah I just on shots and layout on star wars i don't feel like i'm interacting <laughs> with any shots like uh, i know papa yeah. duke is papa duke but i was playing a theater of magic the other day, right? And there's so much going on that is magical. You don't like the just the vanish shot where a simple diverter puts it into like a little scoop or a yeah. saucer and it holds it there and then kicks it out when you're not expecting it. That's the kind of stuff that you put into the greatest theme of all time for a pinball. Yeah. I think a good way to think about it is if I'm going to invite someone over that doesn't know pinball and I say, I want to show you two magical shots that are going to wow you. Yeah. yeah. Even just one magical shot. So like Aerosmith, whenever people see the ball being flung into the toy box, that's freaking cool. Yeah. Houdini, yeah. when the ball's fired three freaking feet into yeah. that lockbox, amazing. Yeah. What has Star Wars got? Nothing. It's got a TIE fighter on a spring, a bunch of drop targets that are stolen from ACDC, and, and an LCD screen. So there's like nothing there. I, for the life of me, I can't understand why there's no like force grabbing of the ball. And, and that's what's weird because even if you were a location, if, if you put them out on location, th- that's the stuff that would grab you and keep you around playing. And it feels like it just solely relied on the theme to pull people in. Even, even if you take collectors aside and everything else and you're talking about routing, I mean, it, it was beautiful artwork that pulled you in, beautiful back glass or translite that would pull you there. And then cool, neat shots, gimmicks is what oh, yeah. kept you there. Where the, that's why the pinballs have. And this doesn't have anything to keep you there. The problem is is real simple. They are designing these games for tournament players who could care less about any of that stuff. They don't like the randomness. I was talking to someone the other day about the EMP mode in Dialed In, which I think is one of the coolest modes oh, in yes. pinball history. The, yeah. There's like it feels like there's eight magnets underneath the Dialed In playfield, and it, the EMP mode when that fires, it throws the ball all over the place. I love it. Tournament players hate it. They skip it. They don't want it because it might throw the ball down the middle. Um, And I think that's the problem is this machine, Star Wars machine, is made with the code. It's made for tournament players who want to understand how to stack that complex mode set, understand the rules. And look, we're getting people scoring 40 billion points. But what is that? What does that even mean? 40 billion relative to like 2 billion. It's just you, you lose people. And here's the thing. Why would Stern focus on making a tournament game, though? I don't – with Star Wars, that is so so broad to the masses that – You know that why? It's, it's, it's something that's happened over the last few years, and this is just my, again, my speculation, is the most vocal people on the forums are the tournament players, per se, who – like Crazy Levy, good friend. The feedback they get is – is incorporated a lot by these developers and these coders. I mean, look at the coders. Like, these guys are in the tournaments. Like, they want to make games that have depth. But I think they want to make more of the depth happen in terms of how to score. See, I just, for, for a lot of the collectors out there, I enjoy going through the modes and getting to the end of the game. Like, in Toten, I love beating the genie. I don't really, does anyone really care what your score is when you destroy the ring in Lord of the Rings or get to there and back again? It's not really about the score. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when you play Mario Brothers on Nintendo, just getting, beating Bowser is so rewarding. No one's like, oh, but I scored this. So yeah, it's, not it, bad. It's, it's a juggling act. And right now I think Stern is, is doing too much to emphasize scoring and code and not enough to emphasize the magic on the play field itself. 
Yeah. And that's why I thought at least Ghostbusters, it, it was kind of a, a twofold in a sense because you still had a really good journey, had very good modes, yeah. but also you could kind of blow up the scoring on it if you focused on that, or they kind of went hand in but hand. But it wasn't. It wasn't for it, no, it no, your max, no, no, your no, max yeah. is going to be what six times play field. Yeah, Star yeah. Wars, we're dealing with freaking 40 times. Well, but that's field. what I'm saying. Ghostbusters was kind of a, a double edged sword, you could a either go for points there. if you wanted to. Yeah, it was kind of a, a two twofold yeah. thing there. And whereas the, the audience knows that Greg and I are both big Ghostbusters fans, I think that that game in itself, people. Rip it. I get it. I, I get why they rip it. Yeah, I do. But for me, it's one of the greatest games ever made because it is uh, – the theme is 100%. It hits 100%. Yeah. The gameplay is linear. It tells me a story. There's wizard modes, albeit they suck. There are wizard modes to obtain. Um, and you get the art package. You get yeah. the different call-outs. They did it there. So I don't – I just Ghostbusters, don't just, Ghostbusters is what pinball used to be. In five minutes, yeah. you're loving it. Yeah, And look, if they could have not had the flipper gap and the cheap drains and the outlines, there's a couple of things that I think make that game. It's like so fun and so frustrating at the same time. It could have been the perfect stern pinball machine of all time. Yeah. Um, but I just still thought that the Ghostbusters would be the new benchmark for them and that we'd keep improving upon that kind of game. And I, again, I look at Star Wars as, as a huge step back from what oh. Stern gave us with Ghostbusters. There's nobody that could argue that it isn't. I well, mean, that's just a fact. Look at those st string of games you had. I mean, you know, with, with Ghostbusters, and you had Walking Dead, and you had, I mean, like, they, they released yeah, some of the, Metallica, yeah, you released some of the best games that there were, and it's like you said, now they're, they're almost going back to when you had Harley Davidson and Big Buck Hunter, and like, yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I think true. those may be a little better. CS CSI makes Star Wars look barren. I mean, yeah. you, it just... There's at least fun stuff to do in CSI. You got a rotating microscope. It's more yeah. more innovation in that than this death, the Tie Fighter on a spring. That's right. So Canada, when you're when we're talking about shots and layout, what kind of grade do you think you? This I mean, on the pro right now, I mean, I would give shot layout. I would give it a, a B minus okay. just because of the lack of interaction with the ball with toys and mechs. Now we Ooh. we know that the premium Ellie is going to have that gimmick shot. Let's just hope whenever we see the gameplay of it that it's not just one ball going around and that's it. Let's hope because the, I'll tell you what with the the getaway, he did have a shot in that supercharger that changed the game. Yeah. Whenever I have people walk up to that machine, whenever I had one, I had people. I made sure they got to that supercharger. Because their faces lit up. Yeah. That was the it's a wow factor. That was a magical moment. If he can pull that off with this, and it's not just some, you know, just one lap around and that's it. Or if you can't get them all going at once, then I think he's failed in that gimmick. Yeah, that's the big question: is will it be a ball lock or not? Yeah, you and know, everything we've heard. So we'll, find, we'll find out tonight. We'll find yeah. out tonight. We will. Everything we've heard so far that it is not a ball yeah. lock at all. Um, so that's you're to be modest. And we've already kind of touched on this, but rules. Go ahead. Go with the, with the stacking. Rules? Yeah, what do you think? Oh, man, my rules, I had to give it a C. I thought it was very – and it was just because of the uh, the multipliers and everything. Like, I just don't – I don't really care for that. It's it's a deep game, but then I also don't like being able to run everything at one time. It's it's confusing, and it's it's odd. I, I again, like just more of a straight set path or mm -hmm. just – Something easier to, to, to follow. Understood. Yeah. yeah. I'm just confused. And we I don't like the shit out of it. I yeah, I, I don't want to think about it so hard. Yeah. Like, I want to have fun. Yeah. What do you think? Where are you at on rules? Yeah. Just, it, it, I don't understand them. It's yeah. sort of like asking me to review a movie that's in another language. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, um, what I do know is I've been reading a lot of really good players say this game's gone too far with multipliers. Um, the stacking of scenes from the movie makes absolutely no sense. It feels like I get it in Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is a story about houses uniting and forming allegiances, and it made sense. That makes no sense in Star Wars. And I think Dwight – I mean Stern has been doing this a lot, right? Like just completely copying and pasting the, the framework of a code from one game to another. Um, we saw it with Kiss and um, Aerosmith, right, where like – even in the code itself, it was saying kiss when it was an Aerosmith game at the very early stages. So um, I would give the code right now, again, because I think the code could be so much better. I would give it a C. Okay. 
yeah. for confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Uh, what I would say about the code, I'm, I'm a little bit nicer. I'm in a B plus, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I want to get all the bitching he's done about it. Right. He gives it a B plus. B plus man. <laughs> Hear me out here. Um, we can't say it's not deep. Pinball players want deep. Co- I want deep code. I just don't need it to be stacked. Um, I'm giving a B plus because what the work that Dwight Sullivan did pull it, put into it, you can tell he was trying to make this thing. Oh yeah, his he, he put his heart into. It. He did. There you are that. there are multiple modes. There are multiple uh, mini wizard modes. There's yeah. a grand, uh, a large wizard mode. There are multi balls. The code itself. It's hard for me to go anywhere below a B plus because of how much work he put into it. The 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 difference is it would have been an A plus code. All he would have had to do, he could still do this, is stop stacking the modes. Make me and it's gonna be a tougher game. Make me get through each mode independently, like Lord of the Rings getting to Valinor or something. It should be hard to do. I shouldn't be able to that's what I don't like about Simpsons pinball party. You just stack all the damn things, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Spread them apart. Lower the multipliers to maybe two, three times most. Let me go through this story, even if it's not sequential, like uh, Ghostbusters uh, linearity between mm-hmm. Ghostbusters. You can start different modes because we all know the story of Star Wars. Yeah. But I can't go below B B plus just because there's a lot of work, and I think Dwight Sullivan has raised his game over the last five years um, when it comes to coding. Yeah. Uh, game of Thrones was pretty good code. I think the Ghostbusters. For me personally, it was a really good code. Yeah. Um, it still needs to be tweaked a little bit. The uh, wizard modes suck and it's got glitches, but I'm going to be plus for the goals. Let me ask you a question about code because obviously there is a checklist of things that people want when they play pinball, wizard modes, multi balls, all that stuff. But the where what separates like good code from great code is emotion. Like, what do you do? You feel like the coder brought you into the world, right? We hear it all the time with Horde Mode and Walking Dead and how that one mode, like, transports you to a special place. Same way with, like, there and back again. And that's what's missing for me right now. I mean, caveat being, this is only code, what, like, 0.87? So there's more code to come. Um, But I do feel a lack of emotional sort of grip in the way the code is right now. And I think the stacking makes it hard. The multipliers make it hard. And the way the code is unfolding right now just is, is a little sort of sterile, if, if I can yeah, use a word like that. Well, let's not let's not kid ourselves. I know we're saying it's 0.87 and all, but can it, we know that this isn't going to go. Look at their history over yeah, since. Yeah, no, you, it may never get done. It may never get done. <laughs> it, no, he's not going to add anything significant no. enough like these large wizard modes or – that's not going to happen. But you, you, but you just said what, you would love it to be the you know less stacking. We all know they're not going to do any of that. They're, they're not, not going to exactly. do any of that. So that's why I think we you know we always bring our expectations to how they could polish, but they just they rarely polish. Like Lyman polishes, but that takes like forever and a day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I think agree. the last great coded game was The Walking Dead, and I don't think anybody's going to put that much effort because of how many machines. Are being cranked out. You know, Gomez wants three cornerstones. He wants a remake, and he wants a boutique every yeah. single year. There's I, no time. I, for I it. like that they're bringing more games out, but at the same time, I feel like that it's hindering them. Yeah. Why not just make two great games a year versus four games that take forever to finish? Yeah. Either that, or man, I don't care if you make ten damn games. Hire some more freaking coders. Yeah. Like what's so special about these guys that they can't oversee or supervise a group of coders that they just freelance in. I don't care what it takes. They don't, pay, they don't pay these guys much. All the good coders are making mobile games and video games. Those guys are making ducats. I think people oh, honestly don't understand how little Steve Ritchie makes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like these guys aren't making a ton of money. Um, and yeah. Stern is, you know, they're all about the margins these days. And yeah. There's great coders out there, but not for $85,000 it's not. You yeah. said, a, but you said it great on one of your podcasts, and it's uh, you said that so I don't want to, uh, you know, mis misturn me, but you said that most of the people in the hobby that have these large collections make a lot more money than the designers themselves that are designing the games. Yeah, I mean, I hang out with a bunch of dudes that are wealthier than Gary Stern and George Gomez. I mean, the margins in pinball are not great. I mean, per machine sold, I would be surprised if Stern makes maybe a thousand a game. Oh, come yeah. on, Canada. You think it's only that? 
Maybe That's 1,500? Right. I mean, see, here's the thing, though. Delays eat away at it. Everything eats away at the profit. So maybe 2,000. I mean, look, now that they're charging 9,000, yes. Yeah. That's what and doing. for Batman Super LE, they just, like, Gary was laughing to the bank on that game. Laughing wow. all the way. But as I, as I said on a couple podcasts ago, when you look at Star Wars LE over the premium, it's literally like you're giving Stern a million dollars and they're not giving you anything else. So that's, a, yeah. that's where the profit lies with them. It's, it's the alcohol and the dessert of a restaurant where they make all the money. Yeah, very I true. like that. That's a good analogy. So uh, move, moving on into uh, Toys and Innovations, which, again, we've, oh. we've kind of touched on, and it's kind of a, a even more stripped-down mess, I guess. Yeah. Uh, where, where are you at, Canada, with your Toys and Innovations on it? Can I give a D to a game? Or is yeah, you can give a D to a game. I'm giving it, I'm giving it a D. I'll get, I mean, the reason why is they've got three movies of the most amazing things to bring to life. And the fact that there's no Han Solo in Carbonite, there's no raising the X-Wing from, you know, in Dagobah, there's no force training, there's no physical lightsabers clashing in the game. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. The hyperdrive is... And a bobble head. You don't even see the hyperdrive in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and, and it's not a pivotal moment of the film. Yes, they're always trying to escape into light speed. But man, yeah. that's just like the stopgap moments of those films. It's not like the iconic emotional moments. So I just think with everything they had to work with, if Steve Ritchie walked into my office and I'm George Gomez and he's like, you know, the main feature is going to be a hyperdrive. I'm going to be like, no, it's not. It's yeah. going to be the Emperor's Chamber. It's going to be Luke and Darth Vader are going to have lightsaber Jeez. battles. No, it's not. Go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Yeah, very true. We've yeah. been great. Uh, man, I, mine, mine on Toys and Innovation was a C minus. I couldn't, I mean, I wouldn't far off from you. I, I, there was just nothing there. That that Tie Fighter, the Tie Fighter was a little better in person than what I thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. but it's still just a toy on a spring. It's a coil that just yeah, they just it's literally a bobblehead on my dashboard, and and that that just kind of drives me crazy that you would stick that in there. And then like you said, the 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 hyperdrop like that's yeah that's why yeah. why does why doesn't the Death Star laser like fire out? Yeah, yeah. like it's just lights. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, lasers it's, are cheap. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and that's what like what I don't get is people complained about when uh, 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 the Jetsons come out about how that there just wasn't anything going on on the Jetsons and, and toys and stuff. And they ended up spooky went back in and they added more toys than what Star Wars has that's true. on there. Honestly, true. at least they took the critique and said, well, you know, we got to we got to populate the play field with a couple you know, yeah. toys and visuals at least. And, and there's nothing on this mm -hmm. game. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I'm at a I'm at a what am I at? I'm at a C. And for me, the C comes from just the idea of, I know we're rating the pro, uh, but the, the hyperspace, regardless of how it works, it is still there. Mm -hmm. um, I do like Stern's use of LCD now, like an Aerosmith and Star Wars. Now, for me personally, I like the videos that end up showing up in the LCD. Yeah. I just think they're, they're crowded because of the stacking. But I like I even like Kill Me, but I like the small L C D screen. Oh, well, I like that. I like it. I don't think it's integrated. No, well. it's not and used. And it's not enough. used at all. Yeah. But Let me ask you guys I, a question. The the quality though, right? When those movie clips play compared to the quality of movie clips when the Hobbit plays yeah. scenes. It's like I don't understand. It's like Stern is like it's not even doesn't even look like H D. No, yeah. I think Jersey Jack Machines when it comes to L C D is art. Yeah. I think this is more just a toy. Well, yeah, and do you even consider that a toy? To me, it's just display. I, I don't, I don't. Other than the small display it's, it's on, the, on, on the thing, I don't. It's innovation. Yeah, it's me. innovation. That's true. It's it, innovation it. to me. And uh, if we're talking about innovation, the sound uh, we'll talk about here in a little bit, but just the package uh, is good as well. There are drop targets. I'm going to see. I'm not. But, but, but can a you even B. can you even consider it innovation just because? Jersey Jack came out with it before. I mean, that, that's like, you know, when you bought a Lexus 10 years ago, you had you had keyless start and everything else. Now Kia has it. So are you going to go to Kia and be like, damn, they're innovative? No, they just Kia, finally they upgraded. But for Kia, they are. Yeah, but it's still not innovation. But I would no. argue, too, that, that that LCD on the play field is, is indicative of a lack of innovation and creativity. Like, it is like we're just dropping a screen here. Like it, yeah. it, it's not even framed. It's not even like it's, it has no point other than to just put stuff that could either be on the screen in the back box area. 
and that to me that takes up real estate where there could have been a physical mechanism. Without a doubt, yeah. without a doubt, that whole that area with the pop yeah. bumpers and them stand ups. I'm like, yeah. damn it, that could have been a cool interactive toy right there. Out of everything wrong with the machine, the toys and innovations is what depresses me and and hurts me the most. But that's yeah. Richie, right? Richie doesn't. He never. If you look at most of his games, toys and anything that slows down the action to him, I think is contrarian to how he likes to design. And it's not like a knock against him. I mean, some people, you know, yeah, if you have absolutely. three games in your collection, you might want to have an Iron Man next to a Toad in, and then you're happy because you've got the best of both worlds. Yeah. So that's right. But do you think they do you think they missed it? Choosing Richie for this theme, I just don't see. Yeah, yeah. Style I think ever working. everyone would have loved Borg or Trudeau to take a swing at Star Wars. And if we're honest, I would have preferred Jersey Jack make this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I, I hate that. That I hate that. That's the default now. How everybody's just like, oh, I'd rather have Jersey Jack make the good things because they make a better machine. I hate that because I do like Stern Pinball, and I know you like Stern Pinball as well, but. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Look, nine thousand dollars versus nine thousand dollars. I mean, I, I've said it many times. I was telling you guys before. I think Stern makes the world's best six thousand dollar machines and the world's worst nine thousand dollar machines. Very true. And That's if true. I can go get dialed in for the same price, I mean, you got to be, got to be smoking some stuff to yeah. think yeah. dialed in doesn't have more value. That's completely right. So we're at C's and D's on toys and innovation. Let's talk about music and callouts. I'll kick this one off. So for me. Uh, music, you guys are going to butcher me on this one. I've got an A. I think music and call-outs, first off, when I hear John Williams' score start, and that's probably about the only time it starts is the beginning of the game, yeah. but there is nothing more satisfying than hearing that score. There's not enough of it in the game. Yeah. This is why it's not an A+, plus for me, but it is there. I do have some call-outs. I've got some video that has the call-outs uh, from Luke Skywalker yeah. and Han Solo. It's enough for me. When I played the game, I thought, this sounds very pleasing to me. Yeah, and I, I gave a little bit less, but I gave it a B plus just for those exact same reasons. But that was it. But there was nothing unique. I, I, I don't know. I wanted uh, uh, some unique call outs or something that was. Yeah, but what are they going to do? You think they're really going to get Mark Hamill to do call outs for this? You never know. He does a lot of work. You know, it, he, uh, look, he comes at a price, so he, he probably would he, do it if you paid him. I, I, I would give it a, a B plus because I think, look, John Williams is an A plus. Like, yeah, it's the yeah. greatest score of all time in terms of movies. And, you know, so Stern didn't have anything to do with that. So I, I, it's amazing. The callouts, look, I think callouts also come as code develops. Um, mm. There's definitely stuff in there now. But not getting original callouts, I think, has always hurt these big franchises because some of Stern's previous titles had. Actors from the movies That's provide right. some amazing callouts, and so you know, I, look, I think Mark Hamill would have done it if Stern ponied up the dollars, but he's probably super expensive right now. Um, but you know, look, the music's great, and I agree. Like when that theme song's playing, there's no better way to attract someone to a machine than that. So you can find somebody on Star Wars. I mean, they got the Hound for Game of Thrones. They got. Uh, what was the, the the doctor character on? Yeah, Star they got Ernie Hudson for Ghostbusters. You know, oh, they, good enough. Those were good enough. So you're at a B plus. I'm at an A. Greg's at a B plus for music callouts. Let's move on to theme. So this is a little caveat here, um, Canada. When we rank themes on this show, we do the theme itself of the pinball machine. That is dialed in as a theme star wars as a theme not so much the integration because we can all agree the integration sucks we'll, we'll talk about that but for the purposes here we're for themes greg and i are both at an a plus for the theme of star wars yeah. itself talk right. about that for yourself yeah i need to know what you guys gave full throttle first before i answer this question we uh, haven't reviewed full, full throttle yet full throttle, <laughs> full throttle theme wise i would can we go to an f on this scale i'd, I'd, no, I'd go I'd to a d d uh, yeah um, <laughs> Yeah, this is an this is an A plus for sure. This is the biggest theme in the history of themes, and you know, obviously, integration. We have different feelings on that, but A plus for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the integration. Uh, you've said it numerous times. I've said it numerous times on video. This is literally a Steve Ritchie game, and then they put a skin on it that was of Star Wars. There's no real integration into Agreed. the game 
itself. It, it, it's like it's like Kaneda said about the emo. It's it, it lacks that emotion. Um, you know, it, it it seems like that it was just I want to make this deep, tough game, or not even maybe tough, but I just want to make this deep game. And it seems like all the passion went into that with with the integration of the theme as a very much of an afterthought. Right. If you look at like the data East Star Wars, and again. I think with a pinball machine and integration, when a machine's off, I want to be able to look down and be like, oh man, I can't wait to shoot that. I can't wait to see what the ball does when it goes there. Yeah. I don't think the game has any of that. And and that's a shame. I, I, I think they um, they had so much to work with, you know, whether it's lower play fields, upper play fields, magnets, something. And it just really is coming up short for me on theme integration. So, But it's because it's like you said, it's, it's just all – pinball shots it's just all a pinball machine there, there's nothing that, that seems specific to S- star wars mm-hmm. it's just it's just beautiful flowy shots with a lot of speed and there's just nothing that says star Wars. it's a pinball machine yeah it's like right. it's an overlay so as we're looking at let's talk about value so the grading system is over uh, we'll talk about composites here in a minute but value can you find what can you find uh, pro price? We got fifty two hundred for a pro. Yeah, um, like so- fifty three, fifty two. Then yeah. what, the premium is what seventy three. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the seven eighty five hundred street price for the LE. Yeah. yeah. So, do you, what do you think? Is there value there, Canada? You know, it's 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 a good question. I um, I wouldn't buy one uh, on any trim level, and just because it, it doesn't excite me and. These things are all getting really expensive, and I think if I were to buy one, I would buy the premium. I, I think the premium is the way to go because I do think the Pro is really stripped down. I, I don't. I do think the Hyperdrive and Death Star shots will at least add something more because it needs more. It, it, it's. It just. I would get so bored with the Pro so quickly. Uh, I'm shocked at the amount of people buying the Pro. It's weird to me that people have like 5,300, but not like 7,300 for such a unnecessary item it's yeah. weird it's like it's like buying a hundred thousand dollar car and then not getting like the headrest upgrade for 500 bucks you know it's just it's weird i just think go with like the that, the one that has all the features if you can get it at the best price um i think the le value is laughable I, I, the fact that they took yeah. out the shaker no back glass no um no topper you know because here's what stern's gonna do now you're going to go be able to get the topper for an extra 500. They're going to sell a kit for the LE that makes the lights in the back box look like it's going to hyperdrive. That'll be another few hundred bucks. The the railing on the sides don't light up the way Star Trek did. You know, you just go down a list of what you used to get is now removed, but the price has gone up. And it's just hard to support a company doing that. And then we, we were talking about dialed in. And again, both games are available new in box right now today. I don't know how you would choose Star Wars over dialed in in terms of value. No, and just like they're making this new glass, right? This non-reflective glass. For the love of everything pinball, put the damn cheap. You know they're getting that glass cheap. Put the damn Yeah, I know. Yeah. Put it in the – look, I don't see how anybody can buy a Stern. This is, this is bold, but I apologize. I don't see how anybody can buy a Stern LE going forward. Without limited limited edition features, a topper is a must. A shaker is a must. Armor is a must. That damn glass that they just created is a freaking must. And a back glass. That is an LE. If those, well, well and Steve, Steve Ritchie's not even signing the play field now. It's a cheap piece of paper that they're sticking on the apron. What, to me, it's you know, it's the little things. It's the little things that collapse empires. And that to me is like leaking water. It, you, how can you get that lazy? Because the whole point is I want to know that the artist signed the actual thing. They, yeah. they could have just mailed Richie 800 pieces of paper and he could have signed those things in, in, in like the Philippines for all I know and, and then mailed them back. Yeah. So, You're not going to take a play field to Richie. You, it's you just can cheap. A, it's cheap. A and they're, look, I've been calling them out on it. And I look – the fact that Star Wars LEs are still available to buy from a distributor says all we need to know about Stern went too far this time with removing value from the game. But hold up, but not I don't think it's just this time, Kenny. I think it's progressively getting worse. I don't it's not just a this time thing because the last damn game we had, what, Aerosmith? 
that was lacking features. That didn't have a shaker, did it? Did Aerosmith have a shaker? I don't think so. Either. I don't know. It had a real it's, back glass. Um, yeah. It certainly didn't come with the topper like Jersey Jacks but, do, and it certainly didn't come with that damn reflective glass. Well, but this was even worse, like because at least on some things like Ghostbusters things and and Aerosmith, like you you had a decent jump between a pro and a premium. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, there's n there's just not a jump between all three of them that that's yeah. worth very much, and, and that that's what makes the LE even more lackluster. And mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and tonight's going to be interesting because. To me, the hyperdrive is going to either satiate people and or everyone's going to bail. It, it's it's going to be a very fun night because if it's lackluster, my, my, my hunch is it's not that great and that's why they haven't shown any footage yet because they don't want everyone to bail on their LE orders because a lot of people have passed the point of refunds from distributors because uh, they were told, you know, after this date, the money's locked in, and Stern's never had a grade A title that's sort of, you know, people have wanted to get out the 11th hour like this. Like Star Wars, like Batman sold out, Ghostbusters sold out. They've got 800 LEs they need to sell, not, not 240, not 400. But if we're talking about what's going to come in the LE in that gimmick, at the end of the day, I don't care if that damn gimmick is the coolest thing you've ever seen. You still go with the premium. Yeah, there's right. still yeah, no right. value right. at all. You, just, you get it. Money. Yeah, no, totally. So, what do you think? Let me let me ask you that. Is it? What do you think Stern will do if they do not sell those LEs and they're stuck oh, with a ton of? Them. Do you Come think they'll on. sell them? Yes. Yeah, do you think yeah, they'll because, sell them? Because the other side of the hobby is the pinball buyer, which has proven time and time again to be dumber than Stern because they buy before even seeing something. They buy before they even like the fear of missing out. I've never seen a hobby like this where people go all in and they don't even know what their cards are. Imagine playing poker. I haven't even given you three cards yet or five cards and you go all in every time. And that's the way a lot of these new in box collectors are. But I'll say this, people are running out of room and they're running out of money. And I, I, I can feel the pivot happening. People are starting to realize it's not worth it. Plenty of competition, too. Right. I mean, look at Attack from Mars Remake. How mm -hmm. much is that LE? What is it, like seven grand? Yeah, about eight, close to eight. Eight, close to eight. I mean, that pin is proven to be great. They've improved yeah. it on every level. Well, and you get a unique topper. You that topper is amazing. You can't buy that aftermarket. You're yeah. buying that LE, and that's the only way you're getting that damn topper. Otherwise, you don't get one. That's that's an LE. Mm -hmm. Well, and compared to that, if, if Stern made a topper that interactive and that detailed, it'd be $1,000. Oh, yeah. That's exactly right, which people would easily pay. So is it Stern's fault? I mean, is, is Stern working for the hobbyist? At this point, unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. No. But are they still getting the money that they need to get by nickel and dime and everybody because they know their market is going to buy the shit anyway? I think so. It's, you know, I, I do feel like there's finally some competition, right? Mm -hmm. and for, the, for, for the last few years, I mean, let's be honest, nothing really came out that was supposed to. Lebowski okay. never came out. Alien mm -hmm. never came out. I'll even yeah. Hobbit. Yeah, Hobbit didn't really come out. Medieval Madness was delayed for forever. You know, there yeah. really wasn't... I've got ten grand here. Where where can I go get a pinball machine in a box? You know, spooky games are still sort of trying to get to a good level. I think sure. people aren't super impressed just yet. I think there's good stuff to come. Um, Very much. But right now, there's competition for Stern, and I guarantee you, Star Wars will not sell as well as they projected a year ago. Oh, of course not. No. Yeah, of course not. But I'll tell you what, something like. What's really intriguing me, tell me what you think about American Pinball Houdini, because I've played it, um, and it's a pretty awesome game that right now, if if I wanted to buy a brand new game, I don't really want to pay nine grand for the dialed in. It's just a little bit over the budget that I'd like to spend, but at $7,000 for a Houdini or $7,000 in a Star Wars premium, uh -huh. I, I don't think there's another it, game out yeah. there that I'd like it, to as buy. As long as that game comes out and, and it works and it's proven... <laughs> I then played it. I, and I, it works. If I'm in, in a long term. Yeah. You know, as long as it comes out and there, there's there's no major problems with it, I I, I think in my opinion it's going to be a success. It, it's going to be 
it's going to be that next notch that's going to hurt Stern even more because there's another manufacturer in Chicago, like, like Spooky, like JJP, that with is money. Now, they have money. Yeah, right. But I, I would say this, and and this is where we we fall into this trap, right? As as, as fans of pinball, yeah. manufacturing is the pro is the hurdle, and American pinball. Last time I've seen photos inside there, looks nothing like Jersey Jack. It looks nothing like the big factory that Andrew Highway tried to build. How many games can they make and in what volume? See, Stern makes 50 games like a week, maybe more, right? Like it's they, – they, their, their assembly line is humongous. They've always got games rolling out. They're still making like Metallicas. They're still making, you know, Batmans, Ghostbusters. Like they've got eight titles that they're shipping at any one time. Mm -hmm. So – I hope American Pinball can get production down, uh, and that's what it's going to come come down to. Because if people get frustrated waiting, they're not going to wait because there's just so much new stuff. And come October, Stern's going to show Guardians of the Galaxy or Deadpool. I mean, by the time Houdini comes out, that's my only concern is that they showed it too early. They showed it too early. I, you know, as a marketer, you never show your product like nine months ahead, like. Right. Why? People, it's people it, get tired of this shit. Too. Hype is hype. You need like look at McGregor Mayweather. Like they're just hyping it. Like fight's yeah. gonna suck, but you hype it right before. You yeah. know, so that I go spend the eighty dollars. Like you hype well, the game right before it comes out. That's what I feel JJP finally got right with dialed in at least was that there Nailed wasn't it, a Nailed gigantic it. weight like the Less hob and everything. Year. Yeah, and, and and same thing, hopefully Spooky gets, you know. Alice hey, Cooper they show, out they quick. show their games up quick. They, yeah, they and it ought to be out quick. So, yeah, yeah that, it is a very important lesson. To, there's, to be there's too many games coming out. There I, are? I, I said, like, there are more games for this than I feel like there are Nintendo Switch titles, and there's millions of Nintendo Switch owners. Because that is the one thing that Stern gets right, other than, than this game being delayed and delayed and delayed a little bit. But it was still a, a brief delay in the, the scheme of things. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at Aerosmith when it got leaked and everything, and then by the time that it was starting to ship and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that is one thing that at least Stern seems to have down, is that we, we show a game or we leak a few things, and then um, two months later, it's shipping. Right. Yeah. It, so you're still kind of on the hype. Right. I think, look, Stern is... Stern has manufacturing down. All Stern needs to do, all they need to do is get some new young designers in there, up the quality of some of their materials, and they would put everybody out of business. Everybody. Overnight. There's no way anyone can compete with the volume and the manufacturing and the themes they have locked up. But because they don't do those things, the opportunity is open for competition. Yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, we could probably talk about this forever. If we're talking <laughs> about our composites, uh, our composites, Greg's score came out for Star Wars to be a B minus. All right. That's fair. My score came out to be a B. I'm going to 3.22. You're 2.72. Mm -hmm. I have to check on that. Um, and then Canada's came out as a C plus, a 2.5. So what do you think about that? C plus? Are you good with that? Yeah. I mean, I don't like the game. <laughs> so... C plus is um, it sounds even like too nice, but yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what we talked about. Our ratings is they're all weighted the same. Uh, yeah. The theme is weighted the same as rules, and there's pros and cons to that. But we always found like this is probably the best way to do a comparison at the end. Yeah, of the but day. you can't knock theme as it being uh, weighed wrong because I mean you take there's going to be so many people that buy it because it is Star Wars. Like, yeah, but my like, point is who's to say that art equals as much as rules or something like that? Right. Everybody, I would I would argue you you take away John Williams's music which bumped all of us way up and the fact that Star Wars is an A plus theme, the game is really lower than all of our scores. Yeah, yeah very much exactly so. Right. Very much so. That's exactly yeah. right. So it, it's hard to get a rating system. But, but I bought games just on theme. Yeah, that, I'm telling you guys, for, <laughs> I don't want to spend five thousand dollars for the Star Wars uh, Pro because I don't like it. But damn it, it's hard not to buy and have a Star Wars yeah. machine in your in your yeah, collection. Just, just get it, couple. get it in a year for like fifteen hundred to two thousand less. I mean, it's gonna right. happen. <laughs> You're going to be close to the Daddy East Star Wars that's, price by that point. That's exactly right. So, in closing, uh, do a little housekeeping here. Um, Everybody should check out Canada's Pinball Podcast. You can find it on iTunes. And Chris, where else can we find Canada? On SoundCloud as well. Yeah. He's, yep. he, I can't tout this enough, and this is no bullshit. It's because I, I look forward to the episodes. Mm -hmm. um, they come up. Chris has usually got at least one a week, if not 
two, three. Usually, yeah, usually two to three a week. Sometimes, man, you had four. You were going on a roll with that. I know. Shit. And, got no life. Uh, I was loving that, but he's got guests on. You've got to check out Canada's Pinball Podcast, and make sure you follow him on that as well. Yeah. Um, also, we want a, a big shout-out to Larry at Flipping Out Pinball, who's a sponsor of ours, yeah. for all of your Jersey Jack machines, Chicago Gaming Company machines, yes. uh, American Pinball machines, as well as the Escalera yes. um, hand truck, as well as different mods for The Hobbit, Coin Doors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and Penn Stadium. Penn Stadium's our newest sponsor, yeah. who's offering... Uh, state-of-the-art lighting for your pinball machine, fully customizable, app-controlled, flasher integration, yes. GI integration. They're just badass. you got to check them out at Penn Stadium. And then for all of you that uh, ordered shirts, I talked to the printers. Those yeah. should be wrapped up at the very first of next week, so hopefully they will be shipped by midweek. As soon as I get them, I'm ready to ship. I've got all packaging materials. And we're going to do everything. a drawing. We're going to do a drawing for the free T-shirts. Yes. And i got I got a treat for you guys. Check this out. So this is our newest uh, newest contest. What yes. we're going to do is we're going to give keywords throughout our streams, throughout our Facebook page, and throughout our YouTube videos. What you're going to have to do as a viewer to get this fabulous prize is you're going to have to get each one of those words, and you're going to have to message us all three of those words within the next couple of weeks, and you're going to be into a list, and we're going to draw randomly to get this yes. prize. I'm going to show you what this prize is. Canadian, you're going to love this, man. Let me see it. Let me see it. This is a dialed-in sign translate by Pat Lawler. Yeah. Look at that. Seem more impressed, Canada. Come on. It's beautiful. No, actually, I have I have one of those. <laughs> what? You never know. Cause you know who sent those out? Um, anyone who's in on a collector's edition? Uh-huh. J- Joe from Pinball Star mailed us all that. One of those. That's really nice. Yeah, so yeah. these... These are compliments of uh, Flipping Out Pinball. Larry. Um, Larry at Flipping Out Pinball. He gave us two of them. So we're going to uh, give away two of them. And they do have Pat Lawler's signature on there. Yes. He's not always the easiest guy to get to sign stuff. He's not kind of in the signature line at yeah. Expo and stuff like that. So we're really excited to be able to give that out. So listen for those words. Again, one word is going to be released on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. One word is going to be released on Gregorize Stream. Yep. And one word is going to be Twitch. released on on an upcoming it's like, it's like, This is like an Easter egg hunt. I love it. I need to start incorporating some giveaways. <laughs> we're, we're making it tougher because we really wanted to keep those. It, 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 right, every, right. Every, this moral bone in our body <laughs> had to speak like, out and say, shit. we're going to give those thing. away because we wanted them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, anything else you want to touch on, Greg? No, man. I think that's it. Uh, you know, Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on uh, YouTube. Subscribe. We started on Twitch. We're on uh, Twitch now, guys. Yeah, we have Waspinator streaming for us at 8 o'clock mm-hmm. on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I haven't locked down a date yet. I'm, I'd like to do Fridays, but sometimes my Fridays are, are kind of hectic. So um, I'm going to lock down a day, but I'm still streaming multiple times a week at random times. So just check your notifications. Go yeah. to our Twitch page and yeah. And, and if you those. subscribe, follow us. Uh, email yeah. will come up and it'll say is Greg streaming and my streaming, etc. Yeah, I'm going to do more of the late night stuff. Um, and the nice thing about my streams, I have. Literally, I go through games uh, weekly, unfortunately, <laughs> so I've always got something new to play. I'm trying to get it dialed in right now uh, to really stream, and I'm going to get hopefully one of the first uh, American Pinball Houdinis as well. So that's it. Canadian, you want uh, you want to add anything? Do we miss anything for you, bud? No, I just want to say I love your show, and I Thanks. really think you know doing a, 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 a vlog of pinball is the, is the way to go when you're talking about these machines because you know it's always hard to – showcase on a podcast what's going on with these machines so i think it's it's awesome seeing you guys up there on youtube all the time talking about pinball and and anyone who takes time out of their day to make pinball content is a winner in my book because i you know we were talking about it people don't realize the hours that go in behind the scenes to doing these things and i really appreciate all you guys do for the hobby and i look forward to hanging out at a show soon so thanks for having me thank you we'll grab a beer man thanks canada See you guys uh, later. Check out our next video on YouTube and watch us on stream. All right. You hit it off with a bumper nice straight down the middle. Yeah. Middle, yeah. You had a fling with a fling shot. You're rolling out the alley and all yeah. I tried to cradle you with my flipper. It was all in. Oh, I'm about to airdrop in your toilet here in a minute. <coughs> really? Snack. I'm trying to think what was nastier. That comment or that... That gas that you just emitted. Yeah. What did you get this the little V-neck? I had it on. I had it on the whole time. I know, like it. We both got V-neck. What's that say I about us? I always have V-necks. You always rip on me for being this 
So it's it's so it looks like you're uh, you're turning into me. I got a long neck. It fits better. <laughs> I got a long. What are you, a giraffe? Nah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs>